Cultured Saints, I'm Pastor Gibbon, and joining me today from Wheat Ridge, Colorado, with Wheat Ridge Evangelical Lutheran Church, it's Wheat Ridge, Le- Eli Leetzow, Pastor Leetzow. Right. How's it going? Of Wheat Ridge Evangelical. Even, Saint I Leetzow say even, of, you say Evan? So is it is it St. Leetzow of, of Wheat Ridge, or, or St. Eli of Le- Wheat Ridge? I go Eli. Okay, St. Eli of Wheat Ridge. I'm, I'm hip that way. No, it's good to be here. Where's where's here? Here, doing uncultured state stuff again. You know, I missed you too. You know, we drop all of these at once, and so nobody's actually going to know that we took like. Basically I know, but I off. I wish I wish that uh, uh, I I could uh, uh, devote more time uh, to do these things, um, but uh, you know, pride. So also, whenever we sit down to record, we end up spending longer talking about other stuff before we record than actually right. recording, and it ends right. up being like a three-hour ordeal. <laughs> Except today, because we got stuff to do. Well, okay. What are, are, what I like, are we but do? hold on. I like, I like what you've, uh, you've, you've changed stuff, right? I've changed stuff. My the face? hair. You've My changed hair? the hair. I don't think so, dude. So, well, I would have. Well, yeah, but you're bald. You can't change your hair. <laughs> It's true. All right, go ahead. <laughs> so we're going to talk about <laughs> the gospel in uh, the Small Called Articles. This is uh, angry, dying Luther just sort of railing for one last uh, one last swan song against the, the dumb stuff that's happening all around him. I wonder how he felt. Probably, like uh, Probably angry. Well, yeah, he certainly was. He always was. But, I mean, uh, the, whole, the whole idea of, like... Uh, like you, you see this in movies where it's, it's you know comedies or, or whatever where uh, uh, where you you think that uh, you're never gonna see somebody again and so you just uh, uh, just lay into them tell them everything that you ever wanted to say uh, to them uh, because uh, you're never gonna see them again and mm-hmm. then uh, and then it turns out you don't you don't die of the heart attack and you're around for another decade and a half. <laughs> You've done voters meetings this way, I can already tell. Um, <laughs> I'm sure a call's coming. I'm just going to let it fly, guys. <laughs> oh, man. This is why we can't have nice things. Uh, <laughs> All right, so, sorry about this. Angry so Luther, the, go ahead. The gospel, the um, g- which... <laughs> <laughs> Which we, we know because we talk about it um, all the time. Uh, we, we don't just beat this dead horse. We full on shoot it. And, and we should. This is Jesus dying for sinners. This is Jesus covers all your sins with his sacrificial death and resurrection. This is peace. This is comfort. This is hope. Yes, absolutely. <clears throat> he certainly has a problem with, um, with Rome and their take on the gospel uh, because it's not free. It's not clear. Uh, right. It always has these strings attached to it um, <clears throat> in regards to however they want to look at it. And we're going to uh, go through some of the uh, aspects of the way in which the gospel is dispensed. And I think we should probably spend some time on that uh, uh, too today, uh, the Absolutely. way in which it's actually dispensed. So we'll do that. But, I mean, <clears throat> there's aspects of baptism, the Lord's Supper, uh, the keys, confession. We're probably not going to get to those latter two uh, today. But... Um, all of those have... Actually, I think uh, you're right. That's the most important part. What's that? Uh, that, that the gospel is dispensed. Um, in in ours, uh, our, our book of Concord that we're reading, uh, it, it says this is the particular office of the gospel. Um, that, that, that God super abundantly, uh, generously in his grace uh, gives us hope, gives us forgiveness. First through the spoken word by which the forgiveness of sins is preached in the whole world this is the particular office of the gospel you see the gospel has an office it's not just sort of like the the good news of jesus but there's a place where you can find it working right and so i think this is uh, we could go so many different levels uh, and ways with it because uh he's speaking directly uh, specifically to rome and rome would say that I mean, they would probably use the same sort of language or they could they could have the same sort of conversation in regard to this and say that the gospel is an office, but their understanding of the gospel, again, with every single thing, with baptism, Lord's Supper, office of the keys, it's always tied to something else of works righteousness of fulfilling the law. So it's not a free gospel. 
But right. in our, in our day and age, maybe some of the stuff that <clears throat> we're dealing with and kind of how you're uh, uh, leading us off here is uh, modern day evangelical stuff in America um, mm-hmm. doesn't see the gospel having an office. So the gospel is more of a just this abstract, objective truth. And it just sits there in the ether and it's not actually subjectively given and dispensed to you. See, we, we both sides start with it the exact same way, that the gospel is a good thing. But if you don't look where God tells you to look, it can't remain in the ether. See, we're, we're fleshly people and, and we have fleshly sins. And so we need a, a fleshly forgiveness. Uh, if you're going to sort of let the gospel just sort of remain abstract it's always going to somehow get attached to something and and so depending on your right where in in hope you're looking you can you can attach it to your works through uh the works of the church and the prayers of the saints and penance if you're a roman catholic or to being a good person and improving your life if you're a baptist uh but but in all of it though i, I think that it, it actually starts with something simpler that we we tend to jump right over um the bible isn't left alone but it is preached the Bible is preached in the whole world. That that God doesn't just sort of like send the pamphlet out and say everybody will figure it out. But it's not like the Watchtower. It's it's not like the Watchtower because it's it's also about the Trinity. Um, <laughs> but that was, that was a Jehovah's Witness joke. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. For those who don't know what the Watchtower is, it's it's, it's great kindling. Is what it is. <laughs> it's good for the fire. Good for the fire. <laughs> Uh, burns right up like God didn't even want it there in the first place Um, (laughs) but no the the word of God is actually meant to be preached that we have an apostolic faith means that when we have the word of God it's actually meant to be exercised in terms of law and gospel it's not just sort of news but it is law and gospel rightly divided for you and that's when the word of God is applied to your life again in in an office in a place where you can look to see it working or if you're a pastor in the Missouri Synod, an office is the place where you pretend to work and check Facebook. But um, right. or do podcasts. Yeah, does this work? <laughs> no, no. I get paid for it. Though. I get paid for it. Yeah, not the way we do it. Um, yeah. So again, the gospel. Uh, I, I I love how Luther and and it's not Luther making this own his own theology up, right? He's getting this from scripture, but uh, he's he's correctly getting this from scripture, and he's speaking uh, about the very fact uh, that the gospel uh, is is something that is delivered, and unfortunately, I think in, in today's day and age, again, <clears throat> if we're speaking about American Protestantism. Um, the gospel is never something that's delivered. I mean, it is, but they don't have any place it's tied to. So it can be delivered anywhere, right? It can be and delivered so they look everywhere. Right. Except the places where God is actually doing it. Right. So they look in their own heart, they look in their own feelings. How do I feel about God today? Um, if I'm feeling blue, um, then uh, maybe my relationship with God isn't that strong today, and I've got to I've got to work better to get a, a, a better relationship with God, right? Or um, I'm not going to go to church on Sunday. Um, I like the God of creation, mm-hmm. so I'm just going to go out into the mountains and uh, commune with God amongst the rabbits and the dandelions and the clouds. Yeah, sing a Bambi song. Right. Watch out for hunters, mm-hmm. all that stuff. Yeah. Um, but this is what we do. Uh, it's not just sort of like, can you uh, infer abstract theology? Uh, but, but this is what people always do when they feel guilty. They will either try to do something overly religious or overly moral to make up for it. We're trying to find the gospel in a place where God hasn't promised to be. And so they'll either, I'm, I'm going to be a much better person now. I'm going to read the self-help book. I'm going to start working out. I'm going to, I'm going to do all the right things. Or let's, let's just grab onto anything that seems really sort of otherworldly, whether that be Eastern religion, high church, or, or, or even just sort of the, the feeling that you get when the, the praise song like hits that, hits that bridge and uh, the tingly winglies come. Right, those those emotions well up. Right, mm-hmm. it's 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 all something <clears throat> subjective, uh, not subjective in in the proper sense where it's a subjective for you type thing, not just an abstract objective truth, but a subjective truth for you, but subjective in the way that <clears throat> okay, I'm going to decide what it is for for me. 
I'm mm-hmm. going to decide how it looks. I'm going to decide uh, uh, how God is actually going to work this objective truth in my life. That that never gets us anywhere good. And there's nothing new under the sun. <clears throat> we go uh, we get this in the early church. Um, it's just called a, a mysticism back then, where they're deciding how uh, how the the gospel, if you want to use use that term, I don't know if they would, um, is dispensed. Uh, you see this even in the Old Testament too. Again, if if you're not where God has promised uh, to uh, dispense His good gifts, um, then you're you're in a bad place. Mm-hmm. And <clears throat> you you think about this, uh, uh, and I'll just go off on a quick little tangent with the Old Testament, and then we can you can wrangle me back in. But with the Old Testament, you always saw people <clears throat> going off the rails. Um, in regards to sacrifices, because they they thought, I mean, the sacrificial system was set up, God set it up, um, but they didn't see the sacrificial system as a way in which God was dispensing his good gifts to them. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, and, and we'll get into this, the way that God was actually delivering the cross back in time to mm-hmm. them for the forgiveness of sins. But they saw the sacrificial system as good works that I am doing to, uh, to make God happy with me, right? Mm-hmm. So if uh, if one goat is good, two goats is better, right? And if two goats is better, then a hundred bulls is awesome, right? So you just keep uh, upping the ante uh, mm-hmm. to the point where where you're making up your own stuff. You're getting into really uh, dangerous areas, and there's there's occasionally uh, uh, places in which you'll see actual kings in Israel, the Northern Kingdom, um, who are sacrificing their own kids. Uh, to uh, well, actually, at that point, it's to false gods. Um, but thinking that this is actually a good thing and the way in which God will be happy uh, with me, and then I will merit myself worthy of His good gifts, which goes against the gospel entirely. Right, uh, because this is this is sort of always where we're going to find ourselves. Then um, that that when we say I can find the gospel working, uh, we always want to flip the verbs around and say, well, you know what? I can find God here. And again, we're, if just because you find God here doesn't mean you're you're receiving from Him. That that's in fact the, the the old religion of the law that that everybody wants to default to is well if God is here how can I go to God make Him give me what I want by doing something what can I manipulate to get what I want just because you know where God is doesn't mean you know where He's working those are different sure there's there's hidden God <clears throat> there's revealed God there's a number of different things yeah right um and so when when we actually start to to deal with this thing then uh one of the things that we we really really want to recognize uh is that there are uh, at least as luther would 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 uh, sort of give us here there are only four places where you can find god working for you where you can find god working the gospel for you now god god can five, work isn't anywhere there? huh four uh five Okay, let's let's do it and see. Maybe I'm bad at math because I'm a pastor. So well, first I is guess preaching. Maybe, maybe uh, yeah. Okay, preaching. Second okay. is baptism. Right. Third is the holy sacrament of the altar. Right. Fourth is the power of the keys. Ah, you got it. Yeah. Also through the mutual conversation and consolation of the brethren, and that there's right. sort of argument over does this count as part of the keys or not, and then you can you can argue yeah i guess it's it's depending on on how yeah you want to uh define that uh mutual consolation of the brethren but that is an important thing that i think we skip over and and luther doesn't actually have another article talking about that but there is something to be said about being amongst and i think this actually has Maybe this has to do with uh, uh, gathering together uh, as as congregation, and then gathering together as fellow Christians, um, and bearing each other's burdens, right? Uh, uh, weeping with each other in times of sorrow, uh, laughing in joy with each other in times of happiness. Uh, mm-hmm. This is all part part of it. It's this communion of saints sort of thing that that our Lord has actually given to us in the unity of the body uh, mm-hmm. that we are. But anyways, right. um, this idea that Christians can point each other to Jesus, that that's really what right. it is. 
Um, you don't Which need it, to be a pastor to tell somebody, Jesus died for your sins, you are forgiven. Right. And that's always the danger then of us saying, well, my, uh, my Christianity is just between me and God. I, it's I don't, never between <clears throat> you and God. Right. I don't need anybody else. That's why I'm just going to find myself on a Sunday morning in the mountains hiking because it's just me and God. Right, but there's no office there. Like you're, you're going to where God is not working the gospel. And I'm not saying God can't be in nature, but I'm saying if you're looking in nature, you're never going to find the gospel. You're only going to find the law. Right. God works the law everywhere in all of creation. There, there is an order to things. There is a standard to things. Just in that the sun goes down and the sun comes back up, that's an order. That's a regula. Um, that, that there is a natural law written on all men's hearts that, that taking other people's stuff is a no-no. Um, but that if you want to find God working in the gospel, the free forgiveness of sins given in Christ Jesus, you can only look where he's actually giving it. You can look into the office of the gospel, um, that that it there is the preached word, baptism, the the sacrament of the altar, and the key, the office of the keys, which is given to the church. And so right. maybe instead of arguing whether or not uh, your, your sins are, are forgiven, if a layperson says your sins are forgiven, like that can somehow uncrucify Jesus because they're not wearing a clerical. Uh, what we can simply say is the forgiveness of sins is given through the church. The pastor has a special place to proclaim that, but just being a part of the church, everybody should be speaking. Jesus died for us right. all the time. Yeah. And we're going to get probably next time, we're going to get more in depth into the keys and confession mm -hmm. uh, to speak about uh, those things specifically. Yeah. But should we uh, in, kind of move forward so that we don't just sort of talk this one, one more circle through and go to baptism? I mean, we could talk another circle through and say the same thing in a different way. That's always I mean, fun. People. Well, that's how I preach every Sunday, but this is a podcast, so, <laughs> so let's keep going. So let's make this better. Yeah, let's, let's make this better. Uh, <laughs> let's make it better than your service. <laughs> Baptism is not other, nothing other than God's word in the water, commanded by his institution. Hold Baptism on. No, I do want to go back and do another circle, because we, oh, okay. we didn't specifically kind of talk about, I mean, we have before in, in other podcasts, and I think we alluded to it here. Um but yes, God dispenses. So God wins the forgiveness of sins where? Where has he won the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation? He did that at the cross, right? When he said it is finished, then it was finished. All sin was taken upon him. Uh, when he burst forth from the tomb, death was conquered. All of that was done in time and space at the cross. And yet the way in which Luther is speaking about the office of the gospel is that it is not dispensed to you at the cross. You can't go back in time uh, to the cross and, and receive this forgiveness of sins, right? And the mm -hmm. people of the Old Testament couldn't go forward in time to the cross and receive this forgiveness of sins. We can't actually do that. We actually need God to take the cross and dispense it to us in time and space. He did that in the Old Testament with the, with the word preached, but then also with the whole sacrificial systems, with uh, circumcision, that's how he brought the cross back in time to them. And how Luther's talking about this here is he's saying he's bringing the cross, the forgiveness of sins, life and salvation, all the good gifts of the gospel forward in time to dispense, to give to you in time and space where you actually need it. And he does it through specific ways, the preaching of the gospel, baptism, the Lord's Supper, and the keys. Right. That's exactly it. So, baptism? Baptism. Baptism. God sticks his word in water and gives you the water. Yep. That's good. Yeah. Lord's Supper. Well, so, but that's, I mean, so if, if that's it, though, that means that it can't be a couple other things. So, so like, the water in and of itself isn't magic water, or maybe another way of talking about it would be holy water. Holy water. Uh, it's, it's God's word stuck in some water. So the thing that makes it a baptism is that God's word and institution are there. Right. right. It's not and, special and, water, it's special word. Right. And, and we're going to have the same thing uh, uh, spoken about in, in the sacrament of the altar, too. Um, and we say this in, in our small catechisms, right? This, is, this isn't magic water. This is uh, without the word, it would just be plain water, which is, that's exactly what it is. Um, mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't go to, uh, uh, to the church supply shop and get holy water and keep it in the cupboard. And then when I have a baptism, crack it open and pour it in. I don't, uh, the, uh, an hour before service, uh, do a special rite of prayer and blessing over this water 
uh, to make it holy water for baptism. Right. It's, it, it, I it's go to water. The sink. Try yeah, not to make I, it cold because nobody wants to get splashed with cold water first. Thing as in the hot as possible. No. Nope. Just just under boiling. Still no. <laughs> Still no. Still no. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just water. And it's just plain water. So there's no mm. magic to it. Right. Right. And and that, that means also that if God's word is attached to the water, it's actually in a place, which means then that baptism is taking away sins, not just because God wants your sins forgiven, but because God attached that to a place where you can go. So baptism in just sort of is not just sort of like a symbol of forgiveness, but it is the, the, the vehicle of forgiveness. It's like the ark of forgiveness. It's like baptism, which corresponds to Noah and the ark, and now mm. saves you. Wait a minute. Did you get that, that from somebody? Peter. Did some- did, oh, Peter said that. That's right. Mm-hmm. Wow, I forgot about that. Mm-hmm. Also, we <laughs> baptize babies not with boiling water, but we do baptize babies uh, <laughs> because they're sinners who knew Jesus. Not that, yeah, that Moloch would baptize in boiling water. You're nope. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but nope. <laughs> <laughs> right. We don't. We don't want to be tied to uh, to a horrible deity of the Old Testament yeah, that sacrificed that's... children. Right. You, right. Th- you you make weird analogies. Um, <laughs> <laughs> like, are we going to, are we going to, uh, uh, when we get to the sacrament of the altar, start talking about rat poison? Like, <laughs> hey, kids, it's the body and blood of Jesus. It's like rat poison because it does something, but also not like rat that poison. That doesn't make sense at all. That's a horrible I, neither does analogy. Neither does baptize like Molech. <laughs> Bad. <laughs> I said we don't baptize like Molech. I didn't say that there was any correlation like that at all. Okay. I said, wow, man, just listen to my words. And you'll, oh, woo. all right. Sorry, I went off the rails with that one. Go ahead. Go <laughs> the ahead. Sacrament of the altar. No, wait, it are is, we done with baptism? I'm done with baptism. Are we done with baptism? You want to talk more about baptism? Let's do it one more time through. This is a theme, kids. I don't, I don't know. I think I, I, I thought we were, we were going a little bit more and then I, I ruined it with Bullock. Uh, Moloch, uh, he usually ends, uh, screws everything up, I think. Um, okay, sure, whatever. You're, 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 you're driving this ship. Go for we're, it. We're, we're aiming for a shorter, shorter episodes this time. So, um, we, so what do we have? Moloch, how much time do we got to, uh, how much time do we got to stretch know. this out at? You aren't I'm paying attention? Not at all. Uh, okay. Well, it's Sacrament of the Altar. Go for the it. The Sacrament of the Altar this is This is going to be a 19-minute podcast. It's going to be great. We hold that the bread and wine and the supper are Christ's true body and blood. It, it, it actually is what God says it is. It actually does what God says it does. See, you guys make this stuff way too complicated. That's the whole part. If you want to just be angry, Luther, we don't have time to get into the details. I'm just going to tell you that you're being dumb and that the Bible is what God's as it said it is the the promises that that work forgiveness do what they say he does i yeah i hate to oversimplify it but i think i, I think, don't <laughs> i think lutherans generally or let's let's put it this way uh the lutheran doctrine uh just stands in god's word and lets him say stuff and when it doesn't make sense uh we don't try to figure it out because again Whenever we try to figure out something that God says that doesn't make sense, we end up, even though it's a good intentions, we end up in heresy. So, for instance, the way in which if we would ever actually try to describe um, the uh, the Trinity, uh, apart from the way, what's that? We're going to mess it up. Right. Apart from the way that our Lord actually talks about it. So, uh, the best the best that we can ever do, and it, it kind of helps... Um, but at the end, it makes it just as confusing as before is the Athanasian Creed, right? Where we go through all of this stuff and, and we, we, we hammer everything down. Um, and yet we're still only using the words that really God ever describes about himself. Mm-hmm. The problem is uh, it, when you uh, try to make perfect sense of the Trinity, you get into things like modalism or you get into things uh, that, again, it's saying, okay, I've got to take this mystery of who God is, and if it has to make sense in every possible way to my brain, 
So I'm going to make analogies so that it, it does that. For, uh, three leaf clover analogies or ice water vapor analogies or fill in the blank with all of these sorts of things and you always end up in heresy. The same thing happens with sacraments. Same thing happens with baptism, when, where we're trying to say, oh, this, this can't be true. Uh, the, you can't actually be baptized into the death of Christ and raised to new life in his resurrection. So it all has to be symbolic. Well, we would say that ends up in heresy. The same thing happens with the sacrament of the altar. When we're trying to uh, explain to our logical, finite minds, uh, when Jesus says, this is my body, what that means we're going to end up in heresies in, in one of two places, right? Either uh, it's purely symbolic or we go uh, Roman Catholic transubstantiation, which we could talk about in a little bit. But I, I rambled for a lot and I cut you off a couple times. So what did you have to say? Uh, something super helpful that it, it sounds to me like you're basically implying that all heresy is basically playing, hey, y'all watch this, but with the Bible. Hey, it seems like a this. great idea at the time. I have the very best of intentions. <laughs> it's going to end absolutely terribly. No, I think that's a, that's a I think that's a great analogy. Um, but yeah, mm -hmm. it's it's I'm trying to make I, I I'm not going out trying to preach false doctrine. I'm going out trying to make sense of this mystery. The problem is with the gospel uh, and the way in which the gospel is distributed. It's always a mystery. Mm -hmm. That's the whole thing. And right. so if it's a mystery, just let it stand. So when God says, this is my body, take eat, this is my blood, take drink, let's That's just stay, let's stand in the mystery. God says right. this is his, his body. It is. But it tastes like bread. Yeah, because it's, it's bread. But it's his body. Yep. There we you go. understand how that works? Nope. It's because you're not God. Right. That's fine. That, right. That, that's the point. God needs and to you, be for me. Right. And you don't have to under you don't have to say okay well this obviously couldn't be his his uh, body because uh, I could put it under a microscope and and it's bread so uh, we'll go uh, this way with uh, Protestantism and just say it purely represents it eh, but God didn't say that God says this is so let's just say it is okay well if it is then we've got to actually be able to scientifically understand this right so we'll go transubstantiation where we'll start talking about fancy philosophical terms of accidents and and all of this sort of stuff and and that uh it just looks like bread uh but no longer has any substance of bread uh so it just has the accidents as a fancy term uh philosophical term it has the accidents of bread it's got a mask of bread but everything of its substance is is body mm -hmm. and we just say um yeah but but paul in first corinthians says uh it's bread but then he also says it's the body of christ and so we're just going to say it's the bread that we eat is the body of christ Right, and, and actually eat it. And also then with the cup, actually actually drink oh, it. Oh, yeah, I guess the we could. The other thing they talk about is communion <laughs> in, in both kinds. Uh, right. It's worth sort of mentioning because, like, so you can sort of start to outsmart God. So, like, if I got a steak and I slap it on the, the counter, uh, it's going to bleed. There's blood inside of the flesh. And so uh, the Roman Catholics, there were a while where they were afraid that people were going to spill the cup because people are people, and they don't want the blood of Jesus on the ground. So let's, let's sort of do some reasoning here. They'll get the blood just fine in the flesh, which is in the body. So we're That's only going to give them the wafer because you can pick that back up and eat it there's a five second rule that's very clearly instituted by god it'll be fine um and so so Luther, what then happens with this, the cup only only the priest would drink it wait a minute like that, not how god says to do it but better so but then that also makes it seem as if the priests are maybe better than the normal people because they get both kinds Luckily, we're undoing that myth every episode. <laughs> right. And whether or not that was the actual intention of Rome initially, it might have actually legitimately been a good intention sort of thing with a, I don't want to spill the, uh, the blood of Christ. It's too precious. So we're hey, just going to do this. this. Right. Um, but after years upon years and decades of generations of uh, the laity only getting the body and then you get to see uh, B, the fancy priest, eat the bread and drink 
the cop, it kind of uh, rubs the the wrong way of saying, uh, yeah, look at me, I'm, I'm wearing a fancy chasuble. I'm holy enough to drink this cup. You, you're fine with the bread. That's all you get. So even if that were true, that's not what God says to do with it. It's not true, but even if it were true, that's not what God says to do with it. He still says, take and drink. There, all there of you. That. There, there should be that. All, all of all of you. All of you. All, mm-hmm. all of you. All y'all. <laughs> Every single one of you. Take and drink it for the forgiveness of your sins. So Right. This is a gift given to the church. It is an office of the gospel. And so we need to actually be able to go there to find God working the gospel. Otherwise, we're only going to have the law. And, and oddly enough, if you're going to start tinkering with the office of the gospel, it's going to get more and more law-like every time. So if you start, you know, over-philosophizing communion, if you start sort of playing, uh, playing, I, I'm smarter than God and I got a shortcut here, oddly enough, the sacrament starts to turn into a law instead of a gift. Right. Right. And then we screw it up and we screw up the gospel and we screw up baptism. We screw up. How many times a year do I need to take communion to go to heaven? Well, if you watch it sometimes and you take it once, it'll be fine. You see how you're trying to to sort of go to God looking for power instead of mercy. Mercy is undeserved forgiveness. Lord, I got a ton of sins this week. They're the same dumb things I did last week. Help. And I know where to find help. It's, It's in the it's in the host and it's in the cup. If I right. eat it and I drink it, I have forgiveness. Because he promised so. It doesn't make sense. It's weird. Maybe that he does it that way, but that's how he promised. And so that's how I can have confidence and be assured that Jesus' cross is for me. Because he said, I'm going to give it to you here. Right here. Not in a rainbow out there with a breaking of clouds. Not in a babbling brook. Not in your uh, uh, philosophizing and understanding. Not in your emotions. Not in any of that. Right here. Where I said so. The end. Yeah. You know, I... uh, Oh, not the end. Well, no, I just wanted to say I was was actually uh, kind of uh, pleasantly surprised on uh, maybe how good uh, this actually turned out, you know. (laughs) I'm that way given, every time. G- g- given the talent. I expected way more <laughs> crashing and burning, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you actually recorded this time, right? Like, we, we don't have to redo this. Well, I hope. That's all. We out, kids. <laughs>